a strong polar front heads into the northeastern U.S., clearing out to the west, and another storm system moves into the Pacific Northwest. Welcome once again to Forecast Lab. You're going to see a small change in this weather map here, trying to capture more of the U.S. in one frame and add more of Alaska, Canada, and the Pacific. So let's start out. We've got a occlusion moving through New York, Pennsylvania, a frontal wave in the Carolinas and the cold front extending into Georgia and the Florida Panhandle. A strong bear clinic system in Ontario, but you can see the temperatures up in that region a little bit on the mild side, 20s and even 30s. So this here along James Bay is barely snow. But as you go north, yeah, there's a lot of cold air up there. We get rapidly into the minus 20s in Saskatchewan and Manitoba, and we go up into the Canadian high Arctic, and we pick up minus 44 at Eureka. Let's head back into the U.S. It's a little bit too far north. In Texas and Oklahoma, high pressure moving into that region. Temperatures not all that cold, 40s and 50s, but we did have some strong winds overnight through Little Rock, Shreveport, and Dallas. Let's bring this back to yesterday. The frontal system was working through the southeastern U.S., and it produced thunderstorms. 35 tornadoes reported yesterday evening. Let's take a look at the visible animation. That moisture really surged north into Mississippi. You can see the storms going up. The first tornado event occurred about 3.15 p.m. You can see the anvils across Mississippi. Two main clusters, one north of Jackson and the other in the southern part of the state. This one here was associated with a wedge tornado. And they continued into Alabama overnight. You can see the cold anvils and another round of tornadoes occurred much later during the evening towards 3 in the morning in Alabama. And that's it right there. Numerous severe cells going up right in that region. And more tornadoes. And we can watch that outbreak with the radar composite. And I'm not going to stop the loop or point at the screen. We'll just kind of watch things unfold here. So we're up to about 2 or 3 p.m. Severe cells going up, definitely discrete structures. And then heading into 10, 11 p.m., start getting an MCS. And this morning, squeegee squall line from Georgia to western Florida. And that concludes that event. We do have some technically oriented viewers, so I'm going to give you a very quick tour of the charts one hour before the first tornado. So this is going to be 2 p.m. yesterday. This is showing the instability and the SRH, the SRH in these kind of dark blue colors. The instability, the CAPE, surface-based CAPE with these red values. So this is showing values over 2,000, significant instability building into Mississippi and Alabama, and a background field of very high SRH. So. That is certainly tornado weather coming together. This is one of my favorite charts for surface analysis. This shows potential temperature in red and the deformation field can definitely pick out that cold front surging south shows up very well and very likely the warm front is somewhere right in there. But even south of that warm front, we had enough SRH to support supercells. And there's the 300 millibar chart showing a strong jet up to the north and another branch of the polar front jet to the south, and that was supporting those thunderstorms there in the southeastern U.S. Returning back to today, the front carrying that precip into Florida, but not looking for any more severe weather. Already getting the return flow setting up in the Permian Basin and New Mexico, some mild temperatures all the way up into the Four Corners area. In the Pacific Northwest, there's our new weather system moving through Seattle and Portland. Strong cold air advection offshore, so lots of showery precip back here. I don't have that all drawn in because I don't know exactly where it is. But out ahead of it, yeah, we do have the rain coming down from Salem, Medford, 
all the way up towards Spokane, and that changes rapidly over into snow in Alberta and British Columbia, quite a bit of that. Heading up into Alaska, another Arctic high-pressure area from Yukon into northern Alberta, and then up in Alaska, yeah, you can see that we're, we're getting a better look at the system here. Warm air advection into southeastern Alaska, but still a dome of Arctic air in the interior region of Alaska. So a lot of this warm air is just kind of flowing over the top of that. You can see up there around Barrow and Dead Horse, temperatures are in the 20s. So it's kind of ironic. You start out here, minus 14, go north, and it's much, much warmer. In the Canadian High Arctic, we talked about that already. Not much in the way of large domes of high pressure, but the thickness contours do paint out a pretty good chunk of cold air, just kind of sitting up there in the high Arctic region. And we go ahead and head into the weather charts. This is how it looked this morning, showing the jet stream running from Alaska into the central U.S. And up to the north, you're going to see a polar vortex organize. That's a basically a chunk of that large hemispheric vortex that's centered up in the North Pole area. And that's going to represent a mass of lots of cold air in the lower portion of the troposphere. And that does bring down the heights and the pressure in the upper levels. And you can see that come together right here, heading into Friday and into Saturday and into Sunday. That polar vortex just settling in across Manitoba and Hudson Bay. So that's going to be about five days from now. And that's going to help bring down some cold air into the northern U.S. And with that, ridging out there in Alaska. And as many of you know, when we have ridging, warm weather, atmospheric rivers coming into Alaska, we tend to be cold in the eastern U.S. And that's a relationship referred to as teleconnections. And that's kind of what's going on there to a certain extent. We go forward into the rest of next week. That polar vortex continues spinning around and eventually starts falling apart. And we're seeing some flip-flopping in here as we've got a couple of different runs mixed up. And that kind of shows a little bit of the uncertainty in those later periods towards December 10th and 15th. But we will be contending with some cold air up to the north in about a week. This is a neat little animation showing Canada, Hudson Bay, and Greenland at the very top right. And down at the bottom right, you can see the valid times and the shading indicating the 500 millibar temperature. So that's going to be the cold pool associated with that polar vortex and going forward. You can kind of see how that works its way down into Manitoba and Saskatchewan associated with a period of cold weather. You can see the strong northwesterly flow heading into the northern U.S. This is going to be late in the weekend. And part of the reason is this developing block up there in Greenland right out in this region. So as we go into the 4th, 5th, and 6th, you see that very strong southerly flow through the Labrador Sea. Temperature is very warm there in Greenland. And this whole polar vortex just kind of cut off from the Arctic Basin. And that kind of spins around for a while. After the 7th or 8th, not quite certain what's going to happen. You can see one other run gets mixed in right there. And we flip-flop back to the other runs, so just kind of a lot of uncertainty when we get around the 9th and 10th of December. But overall, it does look interesting, and that'll have impacts for, at the very least, the northeastern U.S., maybe not so much down south or out west. And we'll take a look at the forecast, and in the process, I'm going to show you how to analyze these charts in terms of fronts. Now, the thickness lines are very important. Now, you see those red lines and blue lines. Those are the same thing, except the blue lines indicate frozen precipitation. So most of that is going to be associated with snow and the red colors indicating warmer thickness values. Now, the fronts, they tend to lie on the warm side of these tighter gradients right there. So pretty easy to find those fronts, going to be about like that. And then it does cross the thickness contours, but the thickness fields do get a little bit weird when you get into the mountains. So just putting that together, front 
about like that, starting out for this morning, the occlusion going up into James Bay, and the new front out there in the Pacific running about like that. So going forward in time, that frontal system pushes into the Atlantic by midnight, already clearing Maine, but a vast area of cold air advection sweeping into the northeastern U.S. and the lake effect snow showers get going once again. In the Pacific, the system in Oregon makes headway into the interior. And then going through the day tomorrow, Thursday, we see return flow in Texas, some downslope warming in the central plains, and that Pacific front continues to work into California and up into Montana, Idaho, and Nevada. Some snows in the Sierra Nevadas, that's them right there, and rain in the central valleys. Going into Thursday night and Friday, the weather system continues to move eastward, crossing the Rockies and emerging in Colorado and Nebraska. So by the time we do the show on Friday, already looking at one front up there in Minnesota and the other in Colorado. And plenty of return flow out ahead of these two systems and cold air advection coming into the backside of the Minnesota low. So what we see here is the tail end wave in Colorado that loses upper air support. And we just see kind of a long trailing cold front down there into Texas with another surge of cold air coming southward. All right, so looks like this system is going to have a lot less precip as it moves into the northeastern U.S. And we're also not going to be contending with a coastal low, although we're not going to know for sure until this tail end reaches the warmer waters. So not quite over yet. However, not much development. It sweeps cleanly out to sea. So by Sunday, looking at another blustery dry day there in the northeastern U.S., Return flow once again in the Central Plains and another Alberta clipper heading south. This front on Sunday is going to be running about like that, and this is going to bring more cold air southeastward as that polar vortex continues to move south. So heading into a cold period Sunday and Monday for the northern U.S., most of that cold air heads into the northeastern U.S. and looks a little bit mild in Texas, the Gulf Coast area, return flow, and it looks like a little warm front working its way into the Oklahoma, Arkansas area. But out to the west, frontal gradient. Got to watch that stuff. That's probably going to be a new Pacific front running about like that, maybe connecting into that warm front. And looks like there's another secondary front maybe up to the north. So going into Monday and Tuesday, a little bit of organization there and gradually starts coming together. Frontal boundary is about like that. And that slips off to the east there. Little weather system moving through the Ohio River Valley, producing some wintry weather in the eastern Great Lakes. And another high pressure area comes down from Canada. More cold air generation continues. So another cold day for the Great Lakes. That's probably about as far as we want to go. The models have been a little bit erratic past the 150, 160 hour point. So most of this that you see here is just kind of a big unknown. And we'll take a look at the air masses with the 850 millibar heights and temperature. You can see that blob of cold air heading into the Great Lakes region. A little bit of a warm up for Friday and Saturday. We've got a neighbor chainsawing, so don't worry too much about that. We're just about done here. Saturday, the next shot of cold air comes south, but that heads mostly to the east. If we go into Sunday and Monday, same deal. So we're not really getting much of an effect with that polar vortex. Most of it affects the northern tier states, and they're used to that kind of cold. So we're not really looking for this to break any records. A warm-up for midweek. Another round of cold air coming south, but this is getting into that hazy area where the models aren't very good. So this could swing either way. At the time, at the current time, it doesn't look like it's going to do much different from the previous outbreaks, but we'll just have to wait and see about that. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. In closing, I want to thank Christopher Kane, who has supplied our highest pledge ever. That's much appreciated, and 
it's definitely an investment in this program. Thank you very much, Christopher. And also thanks to all of our supporters who keep this program going. Hope you all have a great Wednesday evening and Thursday, and we'll see you back here on Friday for another edition. Have a great one. Bye-bye.